if I can focus. Okay. What's up, y'all squares? It's Phil Maroney, and here is part four of day one of Windy City Pony Con. Yeah. As you can see, Lightning Bliss is over here getting coffee. And then for me, I'm about to walk on over to the M.A. Larson panel. And then for the improv thing. Um, what is this? Okay. Okay. Here I go. I better hope my camera has enough battery. Deep dish room, uh, hoof, hoof work, hoof work. All right, so yeah, just like we're about to meet M.A. Lawson. You know, from from the get go, you know, I thought it was it was definitely something different. Um, you know, to teach friendship beyond uh, equestrian borders and. And I just felt like, you know, but I didn't know what, it's kind of like you don't know what you're going to get, you know, until you actually see it, and then you see them all enter the school. And then it's like they come in, and then we hear those first few kickers talking. It's like, okay, these are going to be our focus. You know, these are going to be the ones we're going to learn a lot about. Um, and and then we just see, you know, eventually their, their adventures play out, and we know they're going to be a big part in the finale eventually um, when, when they, you know, help save Equestria, so, um, but I still think, you know, even though we saw some really good episodes of them, like, for example, Heartswarming Club is probably the best one, or, or What Lies Beneath, it's a close second. I think What Lies Beneath was That's, that's yours, yes. okay, because oh, yeah. I think that one really opened, you know, the, I guess the Pandora's <laughs> box of, you know, what some of their backstories were, because they, they're facing oh, their yeah. fear. I mean, they're kind of sort of right. I mean, it is their job. Um, Rainbow Dash was really trying to, like, corral animals and not really communicate with them, and she wasn't doing a very good job of that either, you know. It's just, it, the, the only one pony whose, like, job was vaguely tied into their treaty mark enough was Pinkie Pie's, and it was just making people laugh, and that apparently is enough for her to be self-sufficient and independent. I don't get it either, but... Well, she lives upstairs at the cake. She does live upstairs at the cake's place. Life to an unknowable destiny. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a way to punctuate an existential crisis. <laughs> Uh, that episode, of course, was Slice of Life, that was the fandom, the, the love letter to the fandom that Mitch initially did not want to do. Hasbro had to talk him into it, and so he had to go over, watch every single episode. Um, he, read, he consumed a lot of fan content, I know that much. Um, he's never really specified what, but yeah, so a lot of uh, fandom jokes are in that episode. And that, that really was, it, it was the 100th episode. He said they should do something completely different. Um, the Twilight had a, a bigger part initially. She was going to be the one, like the tie, the connection for everybody. But they all, uh, Hasbro said, no. But once he kind of like get, got started with it, he, uh, storyboard artist Katrina Hadley, um, Jason Feeson, and Rainbow Rocks co-director Ishi Brudel, and. Unknown person number five, apparently. Is it Larson himself? I, it might be. It could be. It, it, this is going to sound really creepy. Uh, the body type is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it does it sound very, it doesn't just that. sound very creepy. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, uh, Mitch is a bit of a stocky oh fellow, so... Um, no, it would not be Mitch himself, unfortunately. Um, there were a couple of gags that were cut for time. Flash Sentry was going to have a, a line where he, uh, a bit where he follows Cranky Doodle Donkey around asking why no pony likes him. Um, and during, sometime during the wedding, there was going to be a, a cut outside to 
Luna's uh, yeah. that pony guards and Celestia's Pegasus guards kind of mocking their bosses. I understand, I understand why it's really hard to, to accept criticism of yourself um, and to see it portrayed so ruthlessly up on screen. Um, but the, the thing that I took, two things that I took away from that scene were um, the, the two fillies benefiting the most from the friendship lessons. Those are the parallels to the target audience of the show, which was originally little girls, and they stand to learn the most from these episodes, and so we might need to back off this a little tiny bit sometimes. Um, also, Fluttershy's line about, we can't change what ponies think of us, we can only change how we let it affect us. And that also, I'm going to hearken back a little bit to uh, The Return of Harmony Part 1, where Fluttershy herself was kind of an example of that. Um, Discord was trying to tear her down and tear her down and tear her down, but she didn't let him tear her down. She took those negative statements and just threw them right back in his face. She accepted that she isn't, you know, she's weak and helpless and this, that, and the other thing. So if you don't let someone use an insult as an insult, they can't insult you. Um, and I think that that's something, like I said, it got lost in the, in, in the everything about that episode, um, everything else in that episode. That was my big takeaway from that. Um, I do see a hand up. What's, uh, what's up, sir? Um, I have two questions for M.A. Lawson. Okay. Um, so what is your next goal for Generation 5? Um, so far, Mitch, uh, nobody has really said anything definitive about Generation 5 other than uh, the designs that we've seen are just rumors. They're, they're just leaks, um, and they may or may not be official. Um, no one who is currently working on the show, like I said, has given any statement as to whether they'll be working on the show uh, in the future. Um, it's still going to be a Hasbro thing, but we're really nobody's really sure where it's going to go from here. Anybody's guess. Anybody's guess, yeah. And then, well, if anybody asks, if I if anybody asks him, would he be interesting in being the executive producer of the new generation? I personally would love that. <laughs> Um, I don't know if he would. Um, he does have the Penny Royal Academy thing going on right now. He's uh, those books. He did finish those the three books in the series. I don't know if he's going to write more. I hope he's going to write more because where the third one left off, it really leaves room for a fourth. Um, but uh, shortly after the first one was published, it was picked up by Reese Witherspoon's production company to be turned into a made-for-TV series or movie miniseries, something like that. So the. I think Mitch's focus right now is going to be Penny Royal and the odd like convention appearance. Um, so writing for Pony or producing Pony probably isn't very high on his priorities right now. Um, I'm gonna go back really fast because I did have quite a few notes on fame and misfortune. <laughs> um, this idea, this episode was not, uh, contrary to popular belief, it was not an episode that he had written earlier that was reworked and retooled by different writers and then his name was slapped on it for Writers Guild reasons. This was entirely him, but he was also kind of under Hasbro's kind of thumb. They were like, you got to write this episode. He pitched a lot of different ideas, one of which originally was going to sort of tie into Twitter, um, sort of um, like realize that when you're on the internet, it may seem anonymous, but just as you are a real person sitting there typing on a keyboard or on a phone or something, so is the other person that you're talking to. So be considerate of, of other people online. Um, yeah, that was that was um, what, I don't know why my notes are so out of, out of, uh, out of order here. But yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to say about, uh, about that. Uh, I missed the thing about, okay. Um, I did mention the Penny Royal Academy series. I wanted to get to that. I also wanted to get to some uh, slideshow of things that Mitch uh, has autographed. We may not have time for that, though. I might just throw it up real fast. If he could autograph the world, he probably would. He, he would. He has already autographed the same baby twice. Yes, he has. And I don't know what this music is. I didn't pick it. So, bye bye, banana. And, bye bye, uh, banana. And my book. It's a cheesecake, a beverage, <laughs> <laughs> a stroopwaffle. <laughs> so, 
sign. Various signs at BronyCon. <laughs> <laughs> including the map to the marketplace and the no autographs on this display sign, which he signs every year. <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah, that last one, he signed okay. <laughs> Salt lick. A Salt Lick. A Salt Lick. 100% organic dehydrated staff tears. <laughs> <laughs> A sock. <laughs> hey. A shoe. Wow. The In air. the air. <laughs> this pen. With that pen. Actually, a flashlight. <laughs> An elevator sign at BronyCon. Uh, that was in the Hilton. Yes, that was in the Hilton. A car. He signed a few cars, actually. Someone brought a bumper in. He signed a few. He signed a few of those, actually. I got him to sign one for Check. charity. Check. One Jillian Barrow. <laughs> And now here is uh, Jillian Barrow holding that, and then moving on to human beings, he has signed the baby. Of course, it, of course, it bounced. The baby, the same baby, one year later. <laughs> Someone's back. A cop. <laughs> this dude's forehead. Has he signed himself yet? Probably. Oh yes. <laughs> I haven't borne with this to it myself. This dude's back. Oh. This dude would be having the crown chair for the <laughs> no. Peter Doom. The voice of Big Macintosh. Lord yep. Faust. <laughs> the ultimate. <laughs> Lord <laughs> Faust plays with ponies. Don't tell anyone. Change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's them. That's them together. Aren't they cute? Yeah, okay. Hashtag, thanks, thanks M.A. Larson. And once again, uh, uh, if that hashtag, thanks M.A. Larson, hadn't popped up when it did, I probably wouldn't be as fixated on him as I am. So I want to thank the sarcastic fans for being sarcastic. I also want to thank <laughs> Iron Lassans here for providing me with all of those photographs. I was going to throw in the, the photographs from this past BronyCon where he signed both my arms, but... Uh, that's going to be a tattoo someday. But so, when that happens, y'all will know. <laughs> um, one more thing, I didn't really get to go to get to. Um, I didn't get to include a clip because Disney are butts about uh, their stuff being online. Mitch also did write an episode of Gravity Falls in season one. It was episode seven. It's called Double Dipper, and we're in Dipper Pines finds in an, uh, a a malfunctioning copy machine, which makes copies of people and uses those copies to talk to his crush at the party. And it is very cute, and it is a little dark because one of the... Uh, he does it many, many, many times a la multiplicity. Um, so, like, the copies start making copies of themselves. A la the point. mirror pool? Uh, yeah, a la the mirror pool, which, uh, yeah. Uh, one of the copies... Yes, multiplicity. I love that movie as a kid. I love that movie today. Um, one of the copies got uh, the, the paper jammed, um, so <laughs> he was a little he was a little off. Uh, he spoke in gibberish and uh, was one of the first ones to. They figured out that the copies dissolve. Anyone not know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Yes, I know okay. who you are. I am the supervising series director on the show, so I work on every episode. I'm involved with giving notes on scripts and helping put everything together with the voice actors and the storyboard artists and the layout and design. And basically, I see it from nothing to done. So, uh, <coughs> so this is there's the culmination to the end of season eight. Let me just turn it down a little bit, too. You guys have all seen this, so you know what's going on. And we have like, some captions on, too. So. Ideally, when you guys were watching this for the first time, you wouldn't have known that Cozy Glow was a bad guy. Yeah. No. Uh, we know. Uh, yeah. Really? Thanks, Lee. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we, we were trying to set up this thing all season with. Co oh, this is a. So when they did Hasbro Con a couple years ago, there was an event where they had uh, something like a sponsored event. I wasn't there, but I heard about this. They had a, a raffle for some of the attendees who paid for this event to enter to be in the show. A big chunk of time in the episode explaining why the sun and moon are still rising, at, and then we don't get to know why the bad guy's plan is the plan it is. Yes, sir. 
Um, how does one winner or one OC oh, feature okay. to get featured in the episode? In that, those, those two winners, they yes. were part of a, a thing at Hascon. And it was a raffle, so Hasbro was all involved with that, and that was a special thing that they've granted people. It's not happening again in season nine. Way at the back over there. At the beginning of the episode, when Yoda plummeted towards the ground, yes. and Gallus and Ocellus got her, yeah. how strong is Ocellus? Clearly not that. I would say most of it's Gallus. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Okay, oh yeah, you're headed to the other side. Hello, how are you? Hey. So you must be Apple Geek, correct? I'm Phil Mavroni. I'm one of your subscribers on YouTube. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I like your reviews so far. Cool. Yeah, uh, a lot of people seem to, which makes me happy. Yep. So. I am pleased. So. I'm pleased to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the convention. I will. You right. do the same. Alright, stay brony. I will. Throw up. Yeah, because he's after you to check. So far during the day, I saw Silver Quail and Lightning Bliss in person. And at the end of the director's commentary panel, I met, I introduced myself to Apple Geek in person as well. I enjoyed one of his, I enjoyed one of Apple Geek's, you know, reactions. So right now I'm doing a little walking around because now I have like less than an hour, you know, you know, for the next panel that is provided by Silver Quail because his panel starts at 7. <laughs> so I'm doing a little browsing around, walking around. So amazing. Which is multiplication of three. Indeed. Which we shall talk about most days. It's more of the quid pro quo. What the heck? Three butterflies. Alright, so. So we're going to do a new post. The computer will behave. We can finally properly begin. All right. What about kids? All right. So everyone, I'd like to welcome you to Magic is Threes, a study of the number three, and why it's just so darn prevalent in our culture. But before we dive into why, I need to uh, get into the why. I mean, because it really all started with one character. Princess Mia More Cadenza. Princess of Merchandising, aka Where Did You Come From? <laughs> <laughs> Folks who've watched my videos for a while know that I am often very critical of Kate. It's partly because I just have a lot of questions around her and I feel like she's going, she's untapped potential. And most of all, I've wondered why is she being shown alongside Celestia and Luna when she's part of the new generation of Alicorns, like Twilight? Or why is she not working with Twilight and coming to understand her role and responsibilities, whereas Celestia and Luna have a thousand year mythos behind them? But I didn't get an insight until I attended a, a Union Society conference, Lord of the Deep Sea. So that's Heaven, Earth Realm, and uh, deep sea can also mean underworld in this context. Oh. So, you, again, you have three realms of reality representing one another, or working together to form a complete whole, where you don't eat. Yes. What? Sorry about that, I think I left all my charges oh. at my table. I would, I would never get back to you and then I feel guilty that I take in your stuff. I will be fine. I just have to Thanks, remember Zibokra. to take a pen with me next time. Thanks. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It's nice meeting you. Pleasure. So I'll now. see you tomorrow for the Whose Lies Is It Anyway. Indeed. Yep. Have a nice night. You too.
Um, what we makes this plane right now? Um, this is uh, JV. JV. Oh yeah, GV, uh, JV Remix? Yes sir. Oh, okay. Becoming popular with JV's transfer Oh, okay. Sometimes I feel like I'm in a weird episode of GI Joe. Becoming popular JV. Okay, got it. Have a nice night. You too. So right now I just got through having a just got through enjoying the panel by Silver Quail, which is Magic is Threes, and I enjoyed it. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. It's kind of cold in here from the outside. So today was such a fun day. I met three people in general. Well, not just in general, but I met. I introduced myself to three people in new person. So far, I saw Lightning Bliss. Silver, well, I saw Silver Quill, Lightning Bliss, and Apple Geek in person. So, other than that, it was such a fun day. So, I'm gonna head to the hotel room and I'll see you when I get up there. Yo, check this out. Yeah, they got like a shower down here. Well, not down here, but up here in our rooms. But look, look at the shower head though. And the buttons, and the switch, the lever. It's not always that perfect, but it's kind of decent though. Hey look, there's me in the mirror. Yay! I'm waving hi to the camera. And check this out. They got like a display clock in front of the mirror. Now how cool is that, man? It's very really cool, you know? Super cool. <laughs> But anyhow, that's going to be the vlog for today, you guys. Thank you guys for watching it. If you like this vlog, if you want to see more vlogs, drop a like in this vlog if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Follow me on DeviantArt. Follow me on Instagram. And watch for the hashtag FilmBaroni on IG highlight when you follow me on Instagram. And don't forget to support me on Patreon. That's also going to be in the description below. I love y'all brownies to death. And don't forget to keep it fantastic. Hallelujah and have a nice night. See you in the next day. Wink, wink. <laughs>